just gonna be some very basic barbell, uh, you know, barbell bicep movements. Now, all of it is gonna be coming out of a, just a traditional standing barbell curl. It's actually gonna be your brachialis, which is the main flexor of the forearm. Bicep itself actually is primarily for supination. So just turning your palm up, that's the main function of your bicep. That's why if you're to the side here, you don't see really the peak so much, but without flexing, just by turning your palm up, you're gonna see that bicep contract quite a bit uh, without really even trying to flex your arm. So that's the, uh, I guess, your main function of your bicep. So that being said, let's get into it. Obviously, you have your traditional barbell curl. So with that, you're usually gonna be right about shoulder width apart, shoulders back nice and tight, arms are gonna be straight, and you wanna keep those, usually you wanna keep those elbows pretty stationary, and you're just gonna be curling straight up toward the top of the range of motion, the top of that flexion uh, at the elbow without moving those elbows. Now that's gonna be your standard barbell curl. It's gonna kind of be the meat and potatoes of the rest of it. You can, it's a little bit more advanced movement, uh, because one of your bicep heads does attach up in the shoulder, you do get a touch more activation through your bicep if you move your elbows forward, but you need to make sure that you're doing it in a very controlled and deliberate manner. So with that, you're gonna be keeping your elbows at the sides from the bottom, and as you curl up, pushing those elbows out. Now, if you're doing that, I would actually recommend that you do this with a lighter weight, or at least no more than the weight that you would do that very isolated, you know, uh, keeping those elbows in that same position type of curl. Reason being, it's very easy to start trying to use momentum to swing that weight up when you start pushing those elbows forward. And if you are using momentum, you're starting to get your delts involved, you might start to pop with your hips a little bit, you might start to lean back a little bit, and those different things are actually going to be removing the load from the bicep and you're starting to put in all, all these other muscles that you're really not trying to target while you're doing the movement. Whew, that was a lot of talking. So, that being said, you're only doing that, in my opinion, if you're a little bit more advanced and you feel confident with your ability to maintain, uh, I guess, control of the bar throughout the entirety of that movement uh, with whatever weight it is that you're using. So I would usually do this myself lighter than I would do a traditional barbell curl at. So that would be that nice deliberate movement there. And when you do it real controlled like that, you're actually gonna notice you do feel a deeper contraction at the top, pushing those elbows forward a little bit than you do when you're just right here. So that's gonna be just the basics of your traditional barbell curl. Now, to hit the different heads of the bicep a little bit more, or to, to try and not totally isolate, but just emphasize better the different heads of your bicep, what you can do, it would just change your grip position. So, if you were to come with a more narrow grip on that same barbell curl right here, you're gonna notice you start to feel it on the outside of that bicep a little bit more because you're isolating that head more. Same thing, if you go wider, and you can kind of feel through how wide to go. Um, we all have a little bit different levers we're working with in terms of length of our forearm, length of our upper arm, all that. So you're gonna notice uh, that different grips for different people might feel a little bit more of that emphasis on those different elements of their bicep, but generally closer and wider are what are gonna help emphasize them differently. So play around with it, see what feels best for you. Uh, now with that, same setup as you would do with the uh, normal barbell curl, shoulders back, and then as you come up here, and as you do that, you're gonna notice you feel it more on the inside of your bicep. Pretty simple. Now, if you wanted to really take the bicep out of it and focus a lot more on that brachialis, which again, it's gonna add a lot more thickness to your bicep because it is the main flexor of your forearm, so it's an important muscle to work and I personally think an important muscle to try and isolate a bit more. A hammer curl with dumbbells, in my opinion, is probably the best, but if you don't have dumbbells to work with and or if you just wanna get it all done in one spot, a reverse barbell curl is still a great option. Um, an easy bar might be a little bit more comfortable on your wrists if you have some mobility issues, but that pronated uh, palm position 
actually is going to take the biceps out of it a lot, not completely, but a lot. So that way, that flexion of the forearm, you're really focusing a lot more on the breakouts. Now with this one, I would never recommend that you drive your elbows forward because you're not really going to get a benefit in activation there, as well as you might feel a little bit more strain on your joints. So I would keep your elbows right at your side and then just right through here. Now with this, trying to keep your wrist straight, you don't want to be letting them, you know, flex down as you come up, because that's really going to deload the brachialis quite a bit. You want to keep those wrists nice and straight through the whole range of motion and make sure that you're working that brachial as well. So that's really it. You know, it's all basically a barbell movement, but just changing the hand position, whether it's closer, wider, pronated versus supinated, all of that's going to change a little bit the element of that uh, bicep slash brachialis that you're emphasizing. So hopefully that's helpful and uh, more to come on this. Also, I know we're a little bit low on tank tops right now, but we will have more to come. In the meantime, you can still get all of our awesome grit merchandise at gritnutrition.com.